segment is Mark Hunt, and Mark is a candidate for auditor. We met his competitor on the Democratic side last week, Marianne Claytor, and uh, Mark joins us via telephone. Good morning, Mark. Thank you so much for being with us. You're on with Rob hey. and John and Bill. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Where are you this morning, Mark, physically? I, I am in my home uh, in Charleston. Very good. You've got uh, quite the uh, resume, Mark, and uh, while you are not an accountant, you have a law degree and you were a legal counsel to the auditor's office as well, correct? I was, and you know the biggest thing that, that I tell people about the auditor's office, uh, I worked there in 1994. My first year out of law school, I was counsel to the auditor. You know, the auditor has seven divisions. Accounting is only one of them, but um, accounting is a very important part of that office but the auditor is a person that directs about 218 employees over seven divisions the auditor himself or herself is a public administrator and i actually have a master's degree in public administration so um i feel like it's a job that i could do it's feel like a job that you know that i've done i've been there Mark, uh, Bill Stubblefield, uh, uh, J.B. Mikulski was a previous auditor. Uh, looking at your some of your comments, I got the impression that uh, you'll, you'll be bringing additional trained investigators in and a couple of other points. Uh, does that imply that you're less than pleased with some of the stuff that J.B. was doing? No, J.B.'s done a great job as auditor. He's a great person. Uh, a couple areas of need in the auditor's office. There's always been a great need in securities. You know, the auditor is commissioner of securities in West Virginia. The auditor approves or disapproves all security offerings in West Virginia, and those offerings are only looked at in a cursory manner. I would like to purchase an IE program to at least uh, uh, read the initial offering. Those offerings are, are often thousands of pages. To read the initial offering, find key words that are fraudulent words, uh, known to be fraud, and then when we see those, put real eyes on it. It's a massive job because of the size of the offerings, and we need to look at that a little closer. And that, you know, back in the day when I worked there in 94, it was a problem. The other problem is delinquent land. You know, the, the author is the commissioner of delinquent land in West Virginia. He sells all the Delinquent land that has to be put back on the books for uh, tax reasons, uh, failure to pay taxes. It's important to the counties. That's how they fund their school systems. Uh, the, the land, some of the land is 18 months old. It hasn't been, it hasn't been, deeds haven't been issued in fee simple absolute. And uh, other, other problems are people have actually have redemptions in excess of $500,000 that haven't been paid back. Now look, there's nothing wrong. Well, nothing, nothing happened, has happened improper. They just don't have the staff to do it. You see, the legislature a few years ago gave the auditor total responsibility for selling all delinquent land in the uh, 55 counties. It used to be the land was first sold by the county sheriffs, and then what was left over, what wasn't sold, the land that was basically under creek beds, under highways mineral interest were then sold by the auditor. The auditor got the duties of selling all the land without any additional staffing, or <laughs> without any additional training, without any additional help. So that's, that's an area that we really have to, uh, to, to grasp and, and, and get, do a better job. Uh, the other area, of course, is we need, to, we need to, to do accounting. We have to audit all governmental entities that receive uh, any type of money that is... Uh, uh, given to them by the state, so we need to make sure that they're spending the money pursuant to the to the statutes. You mentioned earlier, I think, 216 employees in the auditor's office. That, did I hear that right? It, it's a daily difference. <laughs> it changes on a, on a day-to-day basis because of attrition, but uh, I think today it's 218. Yeah, and you used a term that I was not familiar with, i.e., I assume that's... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking about artificial intelligence. Okay, okay. Uh, A.E. Yes. A.E., I'm sorry, I, I misheard yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. that be A.I.? Yeah. A.I. Yeah. A.I., that's even it's a better early. term. Yeah. It's early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, Mark, this is John Gilstrap. I'm looking at your website here, and... Um, of, you've got four main points here: increase transparency, reduce fraud, stop overreach, and protect your tax dollars. I want to <clears throat> drill in on reduce fraud a little bit. Do we have an issue with fraud that needs to be reduced within the state? 
Well, we know there's been some issues in some county boards of education over the last couple of years with spending money that hasn't been a prop hasn't hasn't been appropriated properly. I think that um, we want to continue to, uh, to 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 continue to audit the, every entity in the state, but we want to continue the enforcement. I think that we can bring a lot of money back to the coffers in West Virginia, back to the state treasury, simply by auditing uh, not so much theft but waste. Uh, there's a lot of waste out there in a lot of the uh, a lot of the state entities. So we're going to audit those folks, and we're going to look at fraud. We're going to look at waste. We're going to continue JB's transparent track checkbook. I think that's a a wonderful thing. Uh, there are several entities that refuse to participate. Uh, as a current state senator, uh, I think I'll have a, a good opportunity to change some legislation, and I think that uh, uh, we're going to ask the legislature to pass a bill to make the uh, transparent checkbook mandatory for all entities. Is it the job of the auditor to determine what is and is not waste? Well, that's the job of the statute. I think the statute tells us how to spend the money and where to spend the money, and then it, it is the auditor's job to determine if those criteria has been met. So vicariously, yes, it is the job of the auditor. Which then brings up a, a question I, I often ask for positions like auditor, which seems to me, and, and judge, there are some jobs that just seem to be agnostic, yet we here in West Virginia, they're partisan. What is the partisan nature of of the auditor position? Why is there a Republican and Democrat? What are the different stances in, in the auditor job? I think all auditors have been the same. Glenn Gaynor, the auditor, I think Glenn was auditor for 27 years. He was my roommate in college, actually. Uh, the um, the current auditor, J.B. McCuskey, is the is is a is a dear friend. J.B. is a, is a Republican. Glenn was a Democrat. I, I think that they audit. They look at things the same way. I mean, there's there's parameters and there's there's standard auditing procedures that must be carried out, and that's the way it's done. I don't think it matters if you're a Democrat or a Republican. It's a job. Mark Hunt, our guest here on the program, candidate for West Virginia State Auditor. Mark, as an attorney and a former member of the state legislature, why would you want to be auditor? Well, actually, I'm a sitting state senator, and that makes it even more difficult mm -hmm. with the, the situation that we have right now. We have a huge Senate presence race, uh, something that I can't really be involved in. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a difficult job. But I think it's normal progression for me. You know, I served um, as counsel to the auditor. I was in the House for 14 years, and now I'm in the Senate. Uh, the next step is a statewide office, and I think this is an office that I'm well prepared. I've been there before, and I'm well prepared to do. And I look forward to, to get digging in, getting a team. I understand from McCuskey, he's taking a lot of employees with him. A matter of fact, there are seven division chiefs. They're all seven will be leaving in some fashion. So there's a lot of people we're going to have to replace. Uh, we're going to have to remold the auditor's office. But I'm not saying we need to make a lot of changes from what JB's doing. Because JB's what he's done has been uh, quite effective. You mean in the uh, attorney general's office, you hire a lot of attorneys. In the auditor's office, do you hire a lot of accountants? Do you hire a lot of investigators? What exactly yeah. do you look for? The auditor has investigators. The, the, what J.B. has done, he's privatized a lot of the auditors. A lot of the auditing, uh, a lot of the auditing is done by outside uh, auditing firms. We're going to bring back some in-house auditors. Uh, the the auditor also is has the duty of collecting any and all state debt that's owed. So we're going to have attorneys too, and J.B. has the same thing. He hires attorneys to collect this debt that's owed to the state of West Virginia and sue individuals who owe the state debt. So we're going to continue with that practice. You mentioned staffing issues at the auditor's office, if I heard you correctly. Were those issues because it's just hard to find people to hire for the amount of money the state offers to pay? Or is that the office isn't funded well enough by the legislature? 
of both. I mean, you know, you know, we have we have people. You know, a lot of the individuals in the office they're not CPAs. They're they're accountants. They're not really auditors. They're accountants, and those people are paid on a lower schedule. But people need to make a living that they can live on, um, some money they can live on. So we're going to have to increase those salaries. And one of the ways that we can do that is through ramping up what we do with uh, with securities because actually we're paid for reviewing those securities, and that brings in a couple million dollars a year to the auditor's office. If we ramp up those reviews of those securities, we can actually probably change that from two million to four million. We can put that into pay raises. Bill, so the oh, that's that's one of the things we do. The other thing most people don't know: when we sell delinquent land for taxes, there's really no bidding. It goes for the lowest price to individuals who buy delinquent land, and often long large land companies. So if it's fourteen dollars and fifty cents of taxes you pay, if we can sell it for twenty eight dollars, the author gets to keep fourteen dollars. So uh, that could be a great windfall for the author's office in terms of staffing. Yeah, uh, Mark. Earlier in response to John Gilscrap's question about partisan versus nonpartisan role of the auditors, uh, and I, I think I, I very much agree with you. It's a, it's kind of a nonpartisan role. But looking at your plan, uh, one was uh, stop overreach, use financial guards to protect against ESG and other woke policies. That has been more of a, uh, a partisan issue in uh, years past. Is there very much of an overreach, or do we have to protect against the ESG and and woke? Well, I think I think where where we're coming from there is uh, there were a couple decisions that were made that were very controversial over the last couple of years. You know, we took COVID money and built a baseball stadium at Marshall. That probably was not consistent with uh, state law. That probably was not consistent with how that money should have been spent. Um, I think that's probably the, the the main issue issue that we're looking at, and we'll be we'll be looking closely at those things. This auditor probably would have denied that um, that transaction and made the legislature made an appro and required the legislature to make an appropriation to have built that stadium. Yeah, uh, and I and I will applaud that. I think that was, uh, from my perspective, a misuse of, of dollars. But what I read from the your state, look, I'm a Marshall guy. The stadium's needed, but yeah, that's improper. Yeah, but the point that I was making, I think that it was a finan- an overreach financial from the federal government, a federal overreach, and talking about the again against woke policies. Well, and I think the woke policies that we're talking about is the state. The state spends quite a bit of money with with our with our law forces, uh, with our with our police offices and state police and areas around the state, and they 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 deal with entities that refuse to uh, make loans to individuals who make ammunition. They refuse to make loans to people that that uh, make firearms. They refuse to have financial transactions with those people. With all the entities out there, the auditor doesn't have to have to make uh, transactions with those individuals either. I thought Riley what Moore. I'm, what, what I'm saying, if you you know, if, and I'm just picking one out of the air. If a Chase Bank refuses to fund Winchester and Winchester's ammunition. We don't particularly have to do business with Chase Bank. I thought Riley Moore, the treasurer of the state, had done some work on that market. Had that uh, not come all the way through? I think that's in the process, but don't forget, the auditors were the buck ends. The auditor's the guy that writes the checks. Mm -hmm. So Riley has the money, and the auditor writes the checks on the money. If the auditor chooses, refuses to write the check, then that's that's where it ends. Or at least that's where the problem could begin anyway, getting the bill paid. I'm confused. If the auditor is writing the checks, who's yes. watch, who's auditing the auditor? Nobody. I mean, basically, basically what happens in the process is the, is the treasurer has the money, and then there's a draft issued for a check, 
the audit the auditor reviews the chat the draft to make sure that it's compliant with the statute the auditor has attorneys the auditor has cpas accountants we then issue the draft but if there's a problem with the draft i.e the the baseball stadium the auditor can refuse to issue the draft so if the auditor for whatever reason auditor random auditor has a problem with acting national bank then the auditor can unilaterally choose to stop doing business with Acme National Bank? Well, if that, that system would come to the auditor himself. I mean, if an accountant saw a problem with Acme National Bank, he would bring that, 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 that potential problem to the auditor. We would have to then make a decision whether the, uh, whether the problem was, uh, was real or not or whether we should follow up on it or whether we should issue the check. By the way, we all know that Acme National Bank finances anvils and dynamite, right? Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and beep, beeps, beep, beep. So, Bill. But, but the auditor does have quite a bit of authority because, you know, not only is the auditor a member of the Board of Public Works, and most of these committees are three person committees the governor, the treasurer, and the auditor. So, the auditor is basically voting on a lot of financial transactions in West Virginia, but the auditor writes the checks. Now, Bill Stubblefield, one of my co-hosts here, is a former president of the Berkeley County Commission. And when the county commission does its budget, they submit that budget to the state's, to the state auditor's office for approval. Yes. You're and you're talking also about doing some investigations into, as you mentioned, the Marshall Baseball Stadium funding. My impression was that the state auditor audits the local governments, but not the state government. Is that not accurate? No, no, sir. The auditor actually audits all governmental entities on a on a schedule. Now, if something is brought to light, let's say the problem in one of the school boards up in Upshur County a few years ago, then that audit could be moved up uh, on an emergency basis. But no, sir, the auditor audits counties, the auditor audits cities, the auditor audits everything. Does the auditor audit the state legislature? The auditor can, does have the authority to audit the state legislature. I don't know the, what's, what, what schedule that audit is on or, or the last time it occurred, but the auditor can audit the state legislature, yes. The auditor can audit the governor's office, yes. Is there a separate legislative auditor that, generally speaking, oversees their expenditures separate from the West Virginia state auditor? There is a legislative auditor, and the aud legislative auditor has over overlapping functions. Why is that person necessary when the state's own auditor could be auditing the legislature? It's not. Then why do we have it? I don't know. It's something that was created back in the 1970s, uh, the legislative auditor. There was a lot of corruption in the 1970s, and the legislative auditor was created to deal with that corruption in, in conjunction with legislative services. In the, in the mid-'70s, legislative services and the legislative auditor were created, legislative services to provide staffing to the legislature, the legislative auditor to audit legislative activities. The legislative auditor is supposed to be a distinct and neutral person that audits the legislature. However, the legislative auditor is appointed by the president and the speaker. You mentioned school board a while ago, Mark, uh, and uh, one of them that misused the COVID money, COVID uh -huh. dollars. Uh, it was my impression that the State Board of Education uh, did the investigation audit of that. Did you work in, does the auditor office work in conjunction with the State Board of Education? Yes, yes, and the auditor can audit the auditor audits all boards of education on a regular basis on a schedule and once again if there's a, a noted problem he can move, move the schedule up and make a, an emergency audit but uh, yes absolutely and, and, and let's face it there is some overlapping in government but the state auditor is a constitutional employee so i mean the auditor is doing his duty pursuant to the statute so is there a prosecutorial arm to the auditor's no, office? No. What happens is when the auditor finds misdeeds or, or fraud, 
then the auditor makes a referral to the county prosecutor in that county. And to do the audit to begin with, is there subpoena power? The auditor does have subpoena power, but the auditor does not have prosecutorial power. Okay. The yeah. auditor can only make a referral to the local prosecutor. So let's go back to the baseball field at Marshall. About that, two minutes left yeah, here, Bill. Okay. That kind of surprised a lot of us when the Governor of Justice decided they wanted to make uh, redirect money for that. Uh, but I'm understanding today that the final decision was made by the auditor's office in whether or not the bill would be paid. Is that correct? Well, there's no doubt that the auditor wrote the check because the auditor writes all the checks. The auditor prints all the checks. The auditor issues all the drafts. All the checks and all the drafts go to the auditor's office. Okay. And, uh, Mark, we are down to a final minute with you. Why don't you take the minute yourself and tell our audience why they should vote for you on November 4th if they've not voted already? Well, thank you, sir. And, uh, look, I've, uh, I'm a person that's qualified for this job. I have a, a master's degree in public administration. We have 218 employees. That's what the auditor works with, the 218 employees in seven divisions. He makes sure that all the divisions are working properly from securities through auditing, through check writing, through uh, uh, delinquent land. Uh, after the time I spent in the legislature, I, I served 18 years in the legislature, 14 years in the House, and I'm currently a state senator. We're going to make the auditor's office as, as competent and as good as we can, and we're going to put employees in place that will actively audit the state. Mark Hunt, thank you so much for your time this morning. Best of luck to you on Election Day. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye. State Senator Mark Hunt, a candidate for auditor, is opposed by Mary Ann Roebuck Claytor, who we had on the program last week. She made the drive in from uh, St. Albans to be in studio on that one.